Good morning, Bridgeway. How is everybody? Welcome to worship in 2024. We're going to start as we normally do with singing to our King. Would you uh, stand with us as we sing?
just a moment. I want to welcome up uh, Rachel Turton for some announcements. Good morning. Maddie so nicely told me last time no one could hear me because I didn't hold this close enough. So I hope you can hear me a little bit better. <laughs> um, all right. So if you guys are a first or second time guest, um, you guys can scan that QR code up there, um, or it's in the little pamphlet things um, that you can fill out your information to. Um, and we donate $10 to a Child's Hope International for every communication card that a guest fills out. And the baptism class is after service today in the fellowship hall, and then there will be baptisms next Sunday on the 14th. And family worship, that is Sunday, January 21st at 5 p.m. I know it's always a different time, but it's at 5, so. Um, effective parenting in an effective world, that starts February 4th at 9 a.m. Um, you guys can still sign up for that. Um, we did that five or six years ago. Um, and Stephen and I had done that, and my in-laws even did it with us, so it's not just for like young parents or anything, it can be for anyone. Um, and then if you don't know, we are in the process of buying the um, student center next door, um, not Lee's Chicken, unfortunately, that would be. <laughs> can you imagine, that would be fun, awesome. Um, we would be prepared for all of the family dinners, for sure. So. <laughs> Um, but that's um, currently 27% funded, um, so we still need some donors for that. Um, that's for our middle school and high schoolers, and we really want to put um, an emphasis on our kids because they deserve it. They deserve to have that extra room, um, and that's going to be for our United Student Ministry also. Um, that's going to start February 4th. Um, It'll be the first and third Sundays of the month um, at 5.30 p.m., so that's really exciting. I think we're gonna do a lot with that with our students, so um, parents, just get your kids here. That's all we need, and we'll do the rest. So um, there's also um, ladies' Bible study, 6.30 p.m. this week. Um, if you have any questions about it, you can reach out to Sarah Sharp or um, Whitney Cunningham or Brie Houchins. And um, if anyone is interested in adding to the hospitality team, you can reach out to Brandon um, and get details for him. But we need some more volunteers for that too. So, all right, I'm just gonna close in a prayer and we'll go back to singing. So. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Thank you for this day. God, thank you for having us all here to gather together. Um, I ask that you're with all those who are fighting off sickness right now. God, just please strengthen each one um, who is going through just a really hard time right now. Um, God, that I ask you continue to lead Bridgeway through this new year and to help us draw closer to you and follow the path that you have. Let us to um, live out the rhythms of faith to come to you here and practice. God, you are clear through scripture that you challenge your people whenever we rely, on, we rely on anything besides you for security. So just please continue to build our confidence in you and not our confidence in the outcome. God, I thank you for your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So before we sing our next song, last week I was supposed to have Miss Audrey sing and I completely forgot. It, yeah, shame on me. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, I told Audrey, remind me, and we'll make sure you sing this Sunday. We make sure the camera's on her, Cam, and uh, Miss Audrey's going to sing us a song. I'm singing this especially for a sister and a brother in the church. They used to come sunrise, but they don't, I ain't hardly able to come anymore, and I really miss them. Here's for you. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, as I'm asking from you, 
So help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you remember when you walked from a man? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now and then. Pushing and a shoving has clouded my mind. Lord, for my sake, show me the way one day at a time. Thank you, Jesus. Well, awesome singing. We're going to continue our singing, so would you stand? We're going to sing a, another old song here.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you.
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. You can clap, that's fine. <laughs> We're like hesitant, do I clap or do I not? Just, all right, everybody, let's just clap, get it out of the way. Great job. All right. Well, happy new year. I've already been saying that for seven days, so uh, it's our first first Sunday of the year. Give, give yourself a hand, perfect attendance, 2024. I'm excited for the year ahead, you know, it's just kind of like a fresh slate a little bit. I'm excited about the student ministry, we have that building up and running here soon, Rachel coming on staff leading that, and you know, we got several other churches jumping in on that, so hoping that that ministry can continue to grow. Uh, we're going to start a series through the Gospel of John starting next Sunday, and it's going to take a couple years. You laugh. But it's probably going to take a couple of years. I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, one thing I'm going to give you a heads up on is when we're doing our Gospel of John series, we will not have any verses on the screen. Bring your Bible to church. All right. I know, I know. It's easier. It's on the screen. But, you know, uh, I, want, I want our kids bringing their Bible to church. I want you all bringing your Bible to church. We, I, we need to hear these pages rustle a little bit. And you need to mark that Bible up. You guys heard me say it like multiple times, but one day you're not going to be here and your grandkids or your relative or someone you love is going to flip through your old Bible. And they're going to see where you highlighted something, where you wrote something down. I'm still able to see, you know, look at my Papal's Bible. Like those are important things. And I get it. it is more convenient. And, you know, the reason we put it on the screen in the first place, because we're like, well, you know, if someone's newer to the faith, they're not going to know where all these things are. But church didn't always have screens either. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll find out where the books of the Bible are. And uh, I think that's important. I'm not going to do it today because we've got a lot of verses to go through. And anytime we're doing uh, this series, which I'm going to explain here in just a second, we're always going to have them on the screen, but when we're doing the Gospel of John, we're going to uh, just have our Bibles with us. So, uh, man, there's, there's a lot that I want to share, but this is something that's been on my heart for some time, and uh, I believe the Lord want, wanted me to pull the trigger for us. Uh, I believe it's something that's going to be beneficial for you, and this isn't just for people who have kids. Like This is for Christians, period, okay? And it, it is something we're introducing to you. It's, it's Bridgeway Basics, a catechism. And if you, you see the word catechism, you're like, okay, uh, that sounds like it's Anglican or something, and it is. In fact, it's not just Anglicans who have a catechism. Catholics have a catechism. Baptists, believe it or not, have a catechism. Lutherans, Presbyterians, uh, any major denomination throughout church history has had a catechism. But then the question is, okay, what is a catechism? Like, what is that even all about? It comes from the Greek word, if I can pronounce this correct, kate kateheo, which means to teach orally or to instruct. It's used here in Luke 1. If I could bring that up here, Luke 1. So it also seemed good to me since I have carefully investigated everything from the very first to write to you an orderly sequence, most honorable Theophilus. Now, if you're not familiar with Luke, <clears throat> Luke is writing to this guy Theophilus to prove or give, basically state his case about Jesus Christ. And so he's saying, I'm writing all this stuff to make my case for Jesus. Like this is real. This actually happened. So he wants to give this guy, Theophilus, a treasure trove of evidence so that you may know the certainty of the things which you have been instructed. 
kataheo or ayo, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but that's where the word catechesis or catechism comes from. And simply put, it is uh, a form of instruction meant for memorization. In fact, uh, parents, we do catechisms with our children and we don't even know it. For example, if you ask your child this question, does asking me the same thing a thousand times change the answer? What's the answer? No. They ask the same question over and over again. And of course, you know they play mom and dad, right? They'll come to dad, ask, and then they'll go to mom, and you know the answer is going to be the same. And that right there is a catechism. The question is, does asking the same thing a thousand times change the answer? The answer is no. It's, it's the same. That's what a catechism is. There's a question, and then there is an answer. And this, the question and answer format was popularized by none other than Martin Luther. The guy did us a lot of favors. And so uh, he wanted to make it easier for people to memorize basic theology to provide, and again, what this is to do, this is to provide a framework for theology, for your uh, belief in Christ and the, the doctrines and principles in Scripture. So when we're going through this, you're going to notice we're not going to go real deep. This is meant to be an on-ramp for people. Uh, when it comes to, to learning about faith. It's a low speed on ramp for theology for people, for, for everybody. And, you know, and when we, we will have different small groups from time to time, but a lot of people watching online or in this room are, are newer to their faith. And, you know, they, they need that framework. They need uh, something that is an on ramp for them to dive deeper into their faith. And for those of us who are maybe seasoned Christians, we've been followers of Jesus for a long time, it's always good to go back and look at the framework. Make sure that you've got your solid foundation uh, when it comes to your faith. So each month, and this is going to take a couple years too. I don't know how long it's going to take. Some catechisms are like, there's 100 questions. Some catechisms, there's 50. I've been reading different catechisms. New City Catechism, the Baptist Catechism. I, I've read several. And uh, the Bridgeway Basics is going to be a bit of a hybrid, because that's kind of what our church is like. We've got a little bit of everything here at Bridgeway. And so, uh, as the Lord leads, I'm going to share different uh, questions that I think are important for people in this church to, to answer. And I want you, you know, to try to memorize some stuff. When's the last time you've memorized a Bible verse? <laughs> When's the last time you memorized anything? I have a hard time memorizing, you know. Uh, my wife will send me to the store with a list. Men, you know where I'm going with this, right? Like it's on paper or it's in a text. I still don't get everything. Maybe it's just like I can't read. I don't know. <laughs> but I want to challenge us to store some things in our heart. Uh, Psalm 19, 119.11 says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yeah, that's not it, but <laughs> that, that one was just off the cuff. But the psalmist is saying, I have ingrained God's word inside of me and it keeps me from sin. And it's not just to keep me from sin, it's also to help me grow. So I want these things to be established for us. So what, I'm, what we've provided, and this isn't, again, we got one per family, which we can make more, uh, you're going to take this home, and I've got kind of the basic outline from my message today in here. Uh, it won't go into all the, all the deeper stuff, and so if you want to revisit the sermon, just go to our website and uh, catch maybe some things that you haven't missed. But it goes over the purpose of all this, encourages you to set a routine, and then goes through the question and the answer. And so this is for you uh, to learn from, also to teach your kids. And I had flashcards. This one doesn't have flashcards. Someone was not going to get flashcards. Anyways, in, in this little pouch, these are invisible flashcards. Um, there's going to be a flashcard with a question and the answer on the other side. And there's going to be uh, Romans 120. That's going to be our, our scripture memory for the next month. 
And so the first Sunday of next month, we're going to do another catechism. And let me encourage you. I'm just throwing a lot at you, but that's all right. If your, your kid memorizes it, I'd like them to share it on stage. Like, I might freak them out, but I was like, I could ask their parents or I could ask the kids. Their parents aren't going to do it. So <laughs> if your kid, after six months, can quote the six catechisms we go over, um, we're going to buy them a Bible cover. A cool, whatever cool Bible cover they want, we're going to get it for them. You, we're going to give you respect. Um, that's, that's, that's the best I can do. <laughs> buy your own Bible cover. <laughs> so the question we're going to start with today is how can we know truth about God? How can we know truth about God? And the answer is we can know truth about God through creation, through Jesus Christ, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going to work on memorizing, but now we're going to take time to break down the answer. So how can we know truth about God? We know truth about God through creation, the Bible, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So let's start here. The first part of this answer is we can know truth. What is truth? Now, again, this is meant to be a framework. That question right there, volumes have been written by philosophers about what is truth. I'm just going to give a basic definition. And remember, this is framework. We want simple explanations. And then once you have your framework, then by all means, dig deeper. Go into what is truth. Study it. It makes me think of John 18, 37. You are a king then, Pilate asked. This is Jesus before Pilate. You say that I am a king, Jesus replied. I was born for this, and I have come into the world for this, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate asked, what is truth? What is truth? Now, there's some, from a philosophical perspective, Definition is truth corresponds with reality. Truth matches with its object. Truth is simply telling it like it is. The definition we use in our house is truth is what is real. So what is real? Plain and simple. Jesus came to testify of the truth. He is the way, the truth, the life. And so as he is doing his ministry, he is, he is telling people like it is. He's very plain about his message. Truth is what is real. And so what we are saying in this answer are there are real things you can know about God. And you can learn these real things in four different avenues. I'm not saying there aren't more avenues, but these are primary ones. We can know truth about God through creation. You can take that scripture down, buddy. We can know truth about God through creation. This is what we would call general revelation. There's general revelation and there's special revelation. We'll get to special revelation here in a minute. But general revelation is a term that is used <clears throat> to describe how God has shown himself to everybody throughout history in one way, shape, or form. And he's done this by creating the world and creating us. So think about this for a sec. Uh, well, actually, let's go to the text first. Romans one twenty is going to be our memory verse. And I'd quote it to you, but I don't have it memorized. So I'm like holding myself accountable here, okay? I did at one point, but I don't anymore. So Romans one twenty for his, speaking of God, invisible attributes, that is his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through that what he is what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. So the, the verse is saying, you can know things about God by simply stepping outside your door and looking at creation. You can learn things about him. Uh, the astrophysicist Hugh Ross calls it the book of nature. Hugh Ross is a believer, and uh, he's astrophysicist. He, studied, he came to faith by studying the Bible and studying the stars. So what can we learn about God through creation? Uh, Psalm 19.1 is also a great text. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims the work of his hands. 
The heavens declare the glory of God. It's one of my favorite verses. Because when I go outside and I look at the stars, to me, uh, uh, something spiritual happens to me. Not in like a hippie sense. You know what I mean? Like very spiritual. I go out and look at the stars, eat some mushrooms and all is well. That's not it. I look at the stars and I think none of this could have happened by accident. There is no way all of this is some giant cosmic accident. I think of the, the laws of physics. I think of our DNA. Like there's none of this can be an accident. Job in Job 12, it says, uh, but ask the beasts and they will teach you the birds of the heavens and they will tell you or the bushes of the earth, and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you, who among all these do not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? So the Lord's telling Job, go look at the animals, man. Go look at the trees. You know, we're not pantheists. We don't believe the trees are God. But they can teach me something about, about the one who created them. What does this teach us? And this is one of the many reasons I believe in God. Because non-life doesn't create life. It doesn't happen. Chaos doesn't produce order. Unconsciousness does not produce consciousness. And nothing doesn't produce something. None of those things take place in the world in which we live. So, when I, when I think of creation, God's general revelation, I think, all right, yeah, there was a big bang. But I know who was behind that. Either nothing was behind it, or someone was behind it. And you might say, well, Brent, why do you think it was someone? Because only an intelligent mind can create something. Rocks don't create anything. Rocks are rock. It's not an intelligent mind. And so something intelligence behind it, the laws of physics. Something intelligent, why? Because laws come from a lawgiver. They don't just show up out of nowhere. Furthermore, okay, let's say all this happened out of nothing. Why isn't stuff popping out of nothing all the time? You know what I mean? Like, why isn't something popping right here out of nothing? Because nothing is what rocks dream about. It's nothing. And so it's a faith position, right? But you may not believe in God, but you, if you believe that all of this is a giant accident, that is a faith position. It's not something you can explicitly prove. You, you have evidence for it, but I just think your evidence doesn't match up very well. There is a beauty and an order to creation. And so when I think of this, I think, okay, there's something behind it. If you were walking in the woods, so we, we were walking in the woods uh, I mean, this was last year, and uh, there's like some old junkyards on the property, because if you know any farmers, they all have a junkyard somewhere, okay? Or they just pile stuff up, and uh, something had gotten washed down this stream, and I, it looks like a can, and I always like to get the old cans and put them up in the barn, and so uh, I go over, I clean it up. It's, it's a, a can of Pepsi Clear. Anybody remember that? For you kids, Pepsi was clear once. <laughs> Nobody bought it. That's why I went discontinued. Now, this is a silly thought, but I didn't just think, okay, the, the dirt grew a Pepsi can. Like, imagine this, son. Come here and take a look at this. No. There's something intelligent behind it. There's print that I can read. There's a can there. So when we see something that is designed, we automatically assume there's a designer behind it. So God has, one way he teaches everybody is that none of this is actually an accident. And if you think it is, I'm sorry, you're way off. Think of your DNA, the, the amount of information in your DNA. I can't remember how many books one strand of DNA contains, but it's a lot. Information comes from an informer. Information just doesn't show up. If, if we were walking in the same woods and the rocks were organized to say, Brent, you are awesome, I would assume my wife probably did that. 
Okay, my kids. I wouldn't automatically think, man, these just washed down the, the, down the lane here and in, in the stream, and this is how they ended up. No, because when we see something orderly, we see design. There's information in your body. And then while, there's books of information in your body. That information told your stem cells to make a kidney, to make a heart, to do all these cool things. Where does that information come from? God has left us clues all over the place. We call this general revelation. So how can we know truth about God? Well, we can know through creation. So what, do I know, what truth do I know about God through creation? Well, I know obviously he's powerful. You gotta be powerful to create something. Incredibly intelligent, you can't be dumb and, and you know, create laws of, of physics and all this stuff. He's very detailed. He knows what beauty is. Like, there are things we can learn about God through what he's created. But that's not the only avenue. Because that avenue just gets us to theism. It doesn't get us to Christianity. But it is a good step in the right direction. We can know truth about God through creation, and we can know truth about God through the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I'm not going to make you sing it, but you know where I was going with that. This would be called Special Revelation. It includes, within this book, physical appearances of God, in dreams, visions also, and the, the written word. The special revelation is God revealing himself in specific ways to particular people in particular times. And this is recorded for us in Scripture, the Bible. Now, we're going to break down more about the Bible in the upcoming catechisms. What is the Bible? How did we get our Bible? Can we trust the Bible? But... Starting off here, do you want to know some truth about God? Go to the Bible. There's plenty in there. This is one massive story, and the main character is God. It's not us, believe it or not. This isn't uh, about us. It's about God. And so, search the Scriptures. 2 Timothy 3, all Scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, for training in righteousness. This is beneficial to you. Now, as, you know, we'll break this down, but it's not always an easy book to read. Like when we went through Ecclesiastes, we had to, we had to dig deep a couple times, didn't we? Because we're like, what is this dude saying? It's not always an easy book to read, but there is truth in here about God for you and how you should live your life. Not just how you should live your life, but what you should know about him. And the thing is, you're going to, if you've been a Christian for a long period of time, you can testify that you can read the same book over and over and you're going to find different things. There's going to be different moments where things stick out to you that maybe didn't otherwise. So within God's word, we read about his character, we read about his power, we read about his actions. We can learn a ton about God if we simply open the Bible. And this is why, one of the reasons, we are going to have the words on the screen. I get it, it's, it's easy to read uh, the Bible on our phone, but I got too many other apps there to distract me. You know what I mean? Sometimes we just need to feel it with our hands and be able to underline something, mark something. So you want to know the truth about God? Step outside your door tonight. Look at the stars. Either those are all a giant accident or something created them. That something is God. You want to know more about God? Get in the Bible. The Bible's, listen, like I said, the Bible's not always an easy book to read. Try Leviticus, okay? Like, it can be difficult. But there's, there's valuable stuff in here for all of us. So we can know the truth about God through creation, through the Bible, through Jesus Christ. John 1, no one has ever seen God, the one and only Son, who, himself, who is himself God, and is at the Father's side. He has revealed him. What does God look like? I do not know. Jesus Christ is the physical representation 
of Almighty God. Now, when we read this, and we're gonna, we're gonna dissect this verse in our series in John, but when we get to the, the catechism of the, the Trinity, that is, that's hard to wrap our minds around. Like, I, I've been a Christian for, let's see, 28 years? I don't have my mind wrapped around it all together. <laughs> don't let that discourage you. Because this is how I view it. And it actually popped up in our devotion this past week. If you haven't got one of these devotionals, they're free. Just grab one. Get me kick-started a little bit. And so uh, they're short. I'm not, a, I'm not a wake up at five in the morning and study the Bible person. Maybe you are, and more power to you. Mike Storch, who's in Florida now, he'll wake up at four in the morning, and he gets going. But Mike is also one of a kind, you know? Um, but it, it's always good to get a kickstart with, with God in the morning. And this stuck out to me in, uh, in the devotion from January 3rd, where it was talking about never stop learning about God. It says, the true litmus test of spiritual maturity isn't the quantity you know. It's knowing the quantity you don't know. It's reconciling yourself with the reality that God is not an object of comprehension as much as he is a source of wonder. And that sacred sense of wonder ignites a holy curiosity to keep learning more about the creator and his creation. I was like, man, that's awesome. I believe that. The more I have learned in my Christian walk, the more I'm like, man, I don't really know that much. Not as much as I thought. Reconciling yourself. Listen, I, if, if you have to get your understanding of God, is that me? ADD kicking in. It could have been. Um, if, if, if you think you have to know everything about God 100% before you're going to follow him, you're going to be waiting a long time. You are. And I don't say that to discourage you because I believe there's plenty of truths and evidence that point to Jesus, that point to God. I, there's plenty there. But are you ever going to have all of it under your complete understanding? No, you will not. So the litmus test of spiritual maturity isn't the quantity you know, it's knowing the quantity you don't know. Reconciling yourself with the reality that God is not an object of comprehension as much as he is a source of wonder. That's beautiful to me. He's not so much an object of comp Not that we shouldn't try to comprehend God, but also knowing that he is God and you are not. It's like a worm trying to understand a human. You know, there is a gap in the understanding there. Don't you think an almighty God who can create everything out of nothing is going to be greater than what your, your three-pound brain can comprehend? I would think. Furthermore, if I could fully comprehend God in my brain, how great is he then? I mean, if, if I can comprehend them completely. So there are things there that we would say are mysterious, but I like what they use, a holy curiosity. And I love that, holy curiosity. Because th there's a difference between wrestling about God and wrestling with God. You've heard me say that before. Wrestling about God is like, does he exist? And, and we've all been there to some point and degree. Wrestling with God is trying to, you know, there's some things I don't understand right now, God. So, well, let's wrestle a little bit about it. A holy curiosity. When I read the Bible and something doesn't uh, make sense to me, my first, the first words I mutter under my breath is, that's curious. Well, that's curious. I don't know about this. Let's check it out a little more. Because your curiosity should lead you to dig a little bit deeper. God is not an object of comprehension as much as he is a source of wonder. So what, is, what does God look like? I don't know. But I know Jesus Christ is the physical representation 
of God. Hebrews 1, long ago, God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets at different times and in different ways. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. God had appointed him heir of all things and made the universe through him. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So he is the radiance of God's glory. You want to learn things about God, you look to Jesus and his life. When you look at Jesus' life, you can see compassion. Mary heals the leper, touches him, and he says, you're healed. That one always sticks out to me because he doesn't heal the guy by touching him. He heals the guy by speaking. It's like he touches this guy's shoulder. No one had, no one had hugged this guy in decades. He's, he's going to die of this disease. Jesus touches him. We see that Jesus breaks down barriers the Samaritan woman at the well, it was improper societally for Jesus to speak to this woman. You know what Jesus does? He speaks to her. He's not going to be bound by our rules. We see that he's just and he's holy and not afraid to call people out. How many times does he call the Pharisees out? And he calls them vipers. They're like whitewashed tombs. They look good on the outside, but they're full of dead men's bones. Or that time, you know, Jesus got a whip and went to the temple. You all remember that one? Jesus got angry. Righteous indignation. We also see in Jesus what sacrifice truly looks like. You want to learn about God? Look at Jesus. We can know truth about God through creation, the Bible, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Let's not discount the third part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. John 15, when the counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. It's one of those things, when you are reading God's word and things stick out to you, I believe that's the Holy Spirit prompting some things. First Corinthians, we also speak these things not in words taught by human wisdom, but those taught by the spirit. Explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. But the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's Spirit because it is foolishness to them. That is why some people think you're crazy for believing what you believe. Then we don't, it's not that we're against those, those folks. They don't have the Spirit residing in them. We want them to come to know Christ as you know Christ, and I know Christ. But for someone on the outside looking in, initially it's going to look a little crazy. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. And so we believe in, in the conviction of the Holy Spirit, where God is drawing us to something, to do something, or to not do something. We believe in that. We believe that God speaks to us through His Spirit and guides us through His Spirit. And so we can learn things about God through that relationship. So, first catechism, how can we know truth about God? We can know truth about God through creation, through the Bible, through Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Let's say it together this time, okay? I'm going to do the question, and you'll do the answer with me. I should have put that on the screen, but I don't know. I just forgot to do it. How can we know truth about God? We can know truth about God through creation, the Bible, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. You've got a month to memorize it, okay? But more importantly, uh, not more important, it's equally important for your kids as it is for you, because this isn't just for people with kids. I want you to hide this stuff in your heart. And that way, you're able to draw upon that framework when you're talking to someone. Well, why do you believe in God? Well, I believe I know truth about God. And the way I know truth about God, through creation, through the Bible, through Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit, that's, that's one of the reasons I, for the reasons I believe that I know things about God. At least gives you a starting point to talk. Our memory verse, Romans 1.20. For his invisible attributes, that is his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. So let me encourage you, each day, when you wake up, grab them flashcards, take a look at them. 
Well, when it's bedtime with your kids, maybe that's a good time for you to go over that. Maybe it's not. Find a time for you to go over these things with your kids. And you're all working on it together to try to hide some things of God within you. We need some good odd ramps. I think this is going to be helpful for all of us, myself included. But it's only helpful if we do something with it, right? So we've given you the resources. We're going to pray here in a minute. We're going to sing. We're going to dismiss. And that's when the work really begins. So let me encourage you. Make this a priority. Let's bow together, church. I thank you for your time this morning. I'm looking forward to learning new things with you, traveling through a, a gospel with you, seeing you grow, seeing your family grow as we examine the framework of our faith. I hope this initiates deeper conversation, uh, deeper study on your behalf. But once again, let me challenge and encourage you as you pray, as you talk to God, that you make these things priority for you and for your family. Almighty God, we are so grateful for the evidence you have left for us to know things about you, to learn about you, from creation, from the Bible, to the example of Jesus, and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You have gone out of your way, Lord, to make sure that we know there is a God, to make sure that, that we know that there is salvation in you. So we're grateful for that, Lord. I, I pray for us as a faith family to make this a, a priority on just trying to hide your truth inside of us, hide your word in our heart. I, I pray for those who maybe are not Christians, and this is something that is new to them, well, I, this would help them uh, learn, get, get some maybe answers to their questions. And we pray that they come to a, a, eventually a saving faith in Christ. And as everyone's praying, if that's you, let me encourage you. If you're watching online, you could uh, shoot us a, a private message. Like, I'm curious about Jesus. Or if you're in this room, catch me after service, fill out a communication card. Uh, email us. I mean, we, we want to make sure that you, you know you can reach out to us and we will respond. Lord, once again, I love you. I'm grateful for the truths that we can know about you through creation, through the Bible, through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I pray, God, that we once again make this a priority to hide in our hearts. I pray these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand and we'll sing before dismiss. And you can grab a binder on your way out there at the guest services table, one per family, please. And if we run out, we'll have more next week. <laughs>